Hello everyone and welcome back to Sonora Spring Zoo. Hope you guys are all having the most wonderful of wonderful days. My name is Leaf and it's so great to have you guys back over here as we get started on the second to last habitat that I have planned for this zoo. Technically habitat. So a lot of you guys kind of gave some really good ideas as to what we should do with these islands in the middle of this little lake over here. And I kind of decided, you know what, you guys are right, we probably should throw some animals in there. Originally, I really didn't want any animals in there, just because it didn't, like, I don't know. I feel like those areas without animals, um, they can really excel, but... I don't know, I just felt like this would be the perfect time to introduce a fun, kind of kinetic animal into the park, and I thought lemurs would be the best choice. So I settled on ring-tailed lemurs, as well as black and white rough lemurs, both really awesome species. Um, and yeah, that's really it. So before we actually get to building the habitat, because it's a relatively easy habitat, I wanted to do something else in this episode. And because of that, I am building a little cactus garden over here. So I'm using the Zen Pebbles, which you can unlock with the Planet Zoo Plus mod. Otherwise, you can get them right from the workshop. Hold on, my dog wants to enter my room for some reason. Uh, but yeah, you can just get those right on the workshop. That is no issues whatsoever. Um, and then, yeah, you can kind of just use them throughout there. Uh, I'm kind of using them as a way to kind of make this cactus garden because I feel like it's probably the best kind of substrate that we could use for them. And it's just a nice bright material that really helps you... I don't know. I think it really works for this area super well. And you can see I'm using those same kind of... Um, path barriers that I've been using throughout the entire zoo for this little area. So those are simply just plaster pieces mixed with the, I don't know if that's a grassland sign beam, but it's a super awesome piece regardless. It's either that or one of the cable pieces from the European pack. But I'm kind of using those as a way to kind of make these beautiful, beautiful little, um, I don't know, kind of concrete plaster fences. Either way, I'm kind of coming in here with a whole bunch of different desert foliage. Again, since Sonora Spring Zoo is based in Southern California, very much on the border of Southern California, as well as Arizona, um, I really want it to be super nice, super lush, and really accentuate just what makes that foliage super awesome. Now we actually come over here and we get started on the habitat itself. So, I had a little bit of an issue with the habitat, um, not really a big issue, it was just not really with the habitat itself, but really a problem with the map. Um, Sonora Spring Zoo is getting a little bit too big for its own good, and because of that, it's getting very laggy. Who would have thought that putting down all these pieces would make this game so laggy? Uh, so laggy, in fact, that I am not building in it anymore. Uh, I actually sent off the last habitat to a good friend of mine who is currently in the map right now, kind of like strategizing, figuring out what they're going to do in here. Really, really awesome builder. Go check out Twin Palms uh, just to see a little bit of a taste of what they like to build. Really awesome stuff coming out of them. But hopefully we can get that relatively soon. I'm not really in a rush for it, and I'm sure you guys really aren't either. Um, I had a lot of fun with this map. I had a lot of fun with this zoo, and we'll be doing kind of like a tour of it later down the line. Once I do get the map back, we're going to be doing just a few more touch-ups throughout the zoo. Just areas I feel like could use a little bit extra oomph. Maybe I could try and find a way for us to sneak in a red kangaroo and emu habitat. Uh, just because I feel like that's something that we kind of need. Um, we have every single uh, grasslands animal in here except for the emu. So I'm kind of like, uh, might as well. We might as well try and find a place for it. So we'll find out kind of like a place for them relatively soon. Maybe we could have that attached to the actual gardens. Maybe we could even line this zoo up for a part two, uh, like a season two, kind of like how Rudy is doing that kind of stuff with uh, Yosemite and stuff. But we'll figure that out later down the line. I am so angry at how smooth this looks in the speed build because it was such a pain because it was so laggy to build for. Uh, maybe later down the line I could upgrade the PC again if uh, YouTube tends to, you know, do well. If you guys are sharing the video and whatnot, maybe I could afford a better PC so I could get some better maps going for y'all. <laughs> um, but regardless, we actually get started on the habitats themselves. 
we've kind of been working on the entire habitat all this time, but we're actually working on the islands now. I really just want to line up what these islands would look like. Uh, the ring-tailed lemur has a much larger troop of lemurs. Uh, meanwhile, the black and white roughed lemur one, which is on the right, ring-tails are on the left. But the ring-tailed one is much larger than the black and white roughed lemur habitat, so I'm kind of working with that a little bit. And then I get started on this actual dock area over here. Um, and I actually do something very unique when it comes to the way that the keepers are able to access this, and I have to give a huge shout out to my good buddy Just Goron for actually teaching me about what these zoos do. Check that out in like a little bit, we'll get there once I actually do build the climbing frames. But I do end up building the climbing frames separate from the rest of the build because it was pretty laggy. And especially when you're working with climbable pieces inside of a habitat, even outside of a habitat, it gets extremely laggy. Um, that's because it's constantly recalculating where animals are able to climb. So I'm doing this little technique. I am putting these little pieces over here and I line them up with the islands to make sure I knew what the sizes were. And I kind of get to work with that. So I start to line them up a little bit and then I just go ham with it. So I'm doing a whole bunch of different kind of climbing frames. One of my favorite parts about building for primates and especially lemurs is just how much fun you could have when making their climbing frames. Uh, you can combine any piece you want. And I'll have a video talking about this relatively soon, but that's the fun of building for primates is that most of their habitats, most of their climbing enrichment is very put together. Uh, either put together like kind of like on a shoestring budget or put together with a very massive kind of San Diego-esque budget. I like to call that the San Diego budget if you're building really, really high scale because they're the people who can afford that kind of building to begin with. So I get to work over here and I'm kind of putting together these little frames and I'm using a whole mix of different uh, kind of materials. So I'm using the bamboo pieces from the South America pack as well as the corresponding uh, rope coils. And in addition to that, I'm also using the Australia beams, uh, like the wood pieces, I guess. And then I also build these kind of wood frame. Um, I'm not really sure what you would actually call those. Kind of just like platform areas, I really don't know, but I wanted to have a little bit more flat ground up here for the lemurs, just so that they would be able to, um, I don't know, relax up, like, in the trees a little bit. Not really trees. I do regret not putting trees in this habitat. That's probably going to be one of the things I do kind of put down there once I do get the map back, but, um, no, just super excited for what's to come in the future. Uh, and I get to work on the other frame over here very much using the same kind of materials. That's another thing that I recommend you do whenever you are building kind of like in this style is make sure that you set down what materials you want to use and then you could just repeat it. So a lot of the times when you are building for primates, you might use rope. You might use fire hose is very common. We don't really have any pieces like that to my knowledge just yet, but maybe someone has something out there. And I also do a little funky technique with the um, with the actual umbrellas from the facilities tab. I wanted to give the lemurs a little bit more shade, and I thought, you know what? If it works for people, uh, pro simians it can work for as well. So I kind of use those at the top of there. It just gives them a little bit more shade. And it brings in a whole bunch of color that I feel like this habitat really needs. Otherwise, it all starts to blend in together, and without those little highlights of color, I feel like the builds just kind of blend together way too much. So, kind of doing that a little bit, and then getting to work on the rest of the foliage throughout here as well, using a whole lot of drin grass back there, because I feel like it's both dry, and it's also kind of like a uh, hydrated kind of grass, if that makes sense, so I use a little bit of that. Uh, and I also add a little keeper door right over here, and a little bit of windows as well, just so that the keepers can see what's going on out there. And this is what Just Goron taught me. Uh, so a lot of zoos may actually have steppable pieces right under the water line. So the primates wouldn't go on it because they know, oh, maybe I shouldn't go in the water. Maybe I'll drown. 
but the keepers know exactly where those stepping stones are. So I thought that was a super fun thing to add right over there. But that is it, my friends. I hope you guys enjoyed this little speed build, and I hope you guys enjoyed what we had to build here today. Super, super excited just to get this zoo out the door for you all to play with, just so that you're able to explore what I was able to build, what Zoov was able to build, and what our next friend is going to be able to build. But that is it, my friends. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next episode. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Goodbye.